Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about software that allows you to dictate text to a Windows PC. Previously I've made several videos on safe computer usage and avoiding RSI. However, as I've now been diagnosed with arthritis, I need to start keyboarding somewhat less and hence speech recognition software is going to be part of the answer. Several options now exist for PC speech recognition, and in this video I'm going to show you Google Voice Search, TalkTyper, Windows Speech Recognition, and Dragon Naturally Speaking. To start with the first of those, Google Voice Search, here we are on a standard Google Search page, but because I've loaded it up on a speech-enabled browser, specifically Google Chrome, I can do a voice search by clicking this little microphone symbol. Sony Professional Website UK. And here we are, it's done the search, come up with the link to the right site uh, which we can visit. Now also, you can do some slightly cleverer things. Um, you can do things like this, for example. Weather in London tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast for London is eight degrees and clear. As I'm sure you agree, that's quite clever. Google answering the question, reading the results, but also it's not going to get us very far in doing any type of dictation into a computer. So let's move on to something else. Here is TalkTyper, talktyper.com, free place you can go to on online to do a little bit of voice recognition. It actually uses the Google engine behind it, but it allows you to put some text into a box and then put it into a program. I'll here pick uh, the appropriate language. For me, English GB might work best. Ready for dictation. And as you can see, uh, we have basically here two boxes. A box at the top that you dictate into, and then a box at the bottom where we can actually do some, some work. I'll get rid of the, the test it's got there, and we'll try doing some stuff. So we click in that box and then we click the microphone and I'll try and dictate some text. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And that worked pretty well, didn't it? Uh, we could move that down there and do something else. But afterwards, unfortunately, the fox died. And that hasn't worked quite so well. Um, we could do it maybe in smaller chunks. But afterwards, move it down. Unfortunately, the fox died. Uh, it's still not quite right. We've got fortunately rather than unfortunately. Uh, we can move that down again. Uh, but you get the idea. You dictate, it puts it in the box. And then we could click the copy text to clipboard, and then we could go into any program, Word for example, or you could go to Twitter or Facebook or something, paste that text in. So this does give you a basic means of dictating text to your PC in a browser and using it for free. But having said that, it's not incredibly accurate. It can't take very long chunks of text at once. So let's move on to look at something a bit more sophisticated. Right, the next thing I'm going to look at is Windows speech recognition. So here I am on the Windows desktop. This is Windows 7. I know you won't believe me, but honestly it is. Uh, I just like it configured this way. I'll look in settings. I'll look in the control panel. Uh, and we will find in here, if we just scroll down, I've got the text very big so you can see it. Uh, we've got speech recognition. So I can click on that. And then you can just go start using speech recognition, which is a standard part of Windows. Uh, you then get your little box comes up, which is the speech recognition thingy. Uh, so if I click on the thing to activate it, this can turn it on and off. And I'll turn it on and off a bit whilst I'm doing this so you can see what's going on. So if I turn it on, launch WordPad. Just turn it off for a second, it launched WordPad obviously. I'm just going to uh, change the font just to be a little bit easier for you to see. Um, if you're looking at this on, say, a smaller screen, and just paste down a bit to make myself happier, and maybe um, expand it up. But basically, I've launched WordPad, and I'll turn this on again, see how it works. Hello. Hello. 
comma, new line. Delete that. New paragraph. This is Windows speech recognition. Full stop. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Correct that. Number two. OK. As you can see, that was fairly successful, this bit. I think I'm going to just try completely again. So we've got the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Number one. OK. And I thought we'd got an extra dog there, and I'm starting to give up now, so I'm going to do a full stop on the keyboard. Um, this does work. Windows speech recognition, you can train the thing. I've gone through some training already. You, you read stuff back to see how it works. It's quite good at controlling programs and things, but it isn't brilliant speech recognition. This said, it is part of Windows 7 and now Windows 8. So if you're running Windows 7 or Windows 8 and you want to try speech recognition, it should be your first place to start because you'll have it on a machine already. Some people seem to get on with it very well, some people don't. For me, it wasn't accurate enough to become a, a, a constantly working tool, and therefore I moved on to other things. OK, I'm now here at my desk where I'm going to show you Dragon Naturally Speaking. This is commercial software. Um, it's available in various flavours. This is going to be Dragon Naturally Speaking Premium Edition. There's also a Home Edition with a few less features, as I'll, I'll explain. Um, and there's also things like a Legal Edition for dealing with legal vocabulary a bit better. Currently, Dragon is in version um, 12, although it updates to version 12.5 as soon as you install it. Now, you can buy this either as box product, as you see here, that's definitely a box. Or you can buy it as a download for the same price. But I would point out if you do buy the box version, you also get this rather nice little headset. Uh, and it's worth pointing out at this stage that if you're going to do speech recognition on a computer successfully, you will need good audio. If you're just going to do things like an old Google search like I showed earlier, the microphone doesn't really matter. The microphone in a standard laptop will be fine. However, if you're going to dictate a lot of text accurately, you need very good sound. So you can put on a headset like this one. This positions a mic in the optimal place, not directly in front of your lips, just off to the side, about three or four centimeters away. That works really well indeed. And in fact, I used this headset when I did the Windows speech recognition test um, a few minutes ago. Having said that, whilst this headset supplied with Dragon does work very well indeed, I don't want to really spend my life with this thing digging into my ears. Um, and sometimes I do have to put on um, higher quality headphones to do audio editing, that type of thing. So what I'm going to do, rather than using this, is I'm using with Dragon um, a tie clip mic, and specifically this um, Sennheisner ME2 mic, which happens to be the microphone supplied if you buy a set of uh, Evolution G3 radio mic units. OK, not standard equipment in most homes, I grant you, but um, I happen to have those around and found this, this mic works very well. Um, so it's not an absolutely incredible quality microphone. It's not the same quality as the, uh, the broadcast mic I'd normally use for, for speaking to you um, on this sort of video. Uh, it's a sort of mic often used with radio mics in, say, lecture theatres. I've got it, as you can see here, clipped to a piece of wire. And the reason for that is so I can easily Flick it round my neck, looks like I'm in some sort of reality TV show. Always return the mic to the same position um, to actually use the thing. So, having talked a bit about that, let's do a demonstration of um, Dragon, naturally speaking, in practice. Um, I'd also note here that I'm going to be using voice software. Um, not for everything I do, I'm hoping to do about 90% of my text input with that. I'll still do a bit by the keyboard, and I'm going to be using a um, Wacom tablet. Um, with, with a stylus for my, my mouse input, or an ergonomic mouse. If you've not seen an ergonomic mouse or a stylus in use before, very good for helping with RSI. I talk about that in my explaining RSI video. Anyway, let's now do our demonstration of Dragon naturally speaking. OK, well, here I've got Dragon running. At the top of the screen, you've got what they call the Dragon bar. Here, for example, you can work with profiles. Profile is what you create 
when you first install the program and it stores information on your microphone settings, it learns how you speak, and it can also, for example, scan documents you've written to, to learn how you use language and, and increase its accuracy on that basis. You've got a vocabulary editor for adding words in, teaching Dragon how to deal with particular phrases, and a modes thing, for example, so you can deal with not just normal mode, but for example, if you just want to enter commands, you want to work with numbers, a dictation mode, which allows you to pre-record audio, have it converted back into text. Okay, so I'll now um, give you a demonstration. I've got Word running here, nice pre-ribbon version of Word, as I much prefer. I'll turn the microphone on and show you how it works. This is Dragon Naturally Speaking. Full stop. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Full stop. And then sadly, the dog accidentally died. Full stop. Well, I guess it wouldn't have died on purpose. Full stop. Select all. Read that. This is Dragon Naturally Speaking. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and then sadly the dog accidentally died. Well, I guess it wouldn't have died on purpose. Stop listening. OK, well, as you can see, that was a pretty successful test. And as you also have seen, I didn't just dictate text into the computer. I also got it to read it back to me. Now, that readback function is something you only get in the premium edition of Dragon. You don't get it in the home version. And you might be thinking, well, do I need the computer to be able to read text back to me? Um, I would suggest you actually do, because even a piece of software like Dragon, which, as you saw, is, is pretty accurate, does occasionally miss out a word entirely or put entirely the wrong word in. And when you just read that back on screen, that's quite difficult to actually see. Whereas when you hear it read back to you, you find the mistake straight away. So certainly for me, one of the learning things about um, getting to use speech recognition software is the need to have read back to make sure things work reasonably well. Final thing I'll say is regardless of what software you use for speech recognition, if you do a lot of it, you will need a fairly powerful PC. Um, in theory, Dragon here, for example, will run on a 1.6 gigahertz dual core thing like a dual core Atom processor. Um, I've tried that, it does work. But in practice, um, to run reliably and quickly, you need, I think, at least a dual core um, processor running at at least three gigahertz. Speech recognition software is rapidly advancing and by about 2020 should be able to accurately transcribe natural spoken language. Even today, it's possible to use speech recognition as a major input method and for anybody whose typing is restricted, this has to be very good news indeed. More information on a wide range of computing topics can be found on explainingcomputers.com. But now that's it for another video and I hope to talk to you again very soon.